Welcome to Levan Arch Congress. And uh, firstly, thank you for your valuable contributions. I am uh, very happy to be here. Uh, according to last program, in the session, uh, total five papers are presented, and we have seven minutes for author. So I request uh, from all presenters, please use to their time efficiently. Uh, to use time more efficiently, if you wish, let's, uh, let's take your question after all the presentations are over. Now uh, we can start presentations. First presenter is Nushan Sönmez. Paper authors is, uh, are Nushan Sönmez and Sibel Maşka Kalfa. Nushan Sönmez, are you here? Yes. Nushan Sönmez. Yes. Okay. Nushan Sönmez uh, will present her paper uh, title of Transition from Nearly Zero Energy Building Targets to Net Zero and Positive Energy Buildings. Nushan, can I start your presentation, please? Hey, hello, I'm Nurshan Sönmez. I will tell you about the work called the Transition from Nearly Zero Energy Building Targets to Net Zero and Positive Energy Building. Uh, we prepared this study together with my advisor, Mrs. Farmachka Kalfa. Uh, content in general, introduction, member countries exiting the European Union, uh, Nearly Zero Energy Building Targets, existing situation and purpose and roadmap maybe in Turkey, evaluation and conclusion. Uh, in this study, the energy efficiency of buildings in the European Union is based on directives and the most effective for energy efficiency building design in the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. The directive was first published in uh, 2002 and then revised in uh, 2010 and 2018. Nearly zero uh, energy buildings with the 2010 energy cost uh, energy performance of building directive from member states. Uh, with the uh, 2018 revision, uh, it was requested to de determine the 2030 targets. Uh, with these targets, the European Union aims to achieve carbon neutral buildings by 2050. The European Commission wa uh, commissions uh, wanted member states law to define uh, nearly zero energy buildings and to create their own national legislation and plans considering climate data. Uh, some countries have already uh, exceeded uh, these targets set by the uh, energy performance uh, of energy performance of building directive. Uh, these countries, Netherlands, Zero Energy Buildings, Germany, Climate Neutral Buildings, Denmark and France, Positive Energy Buildings. Uh, in this study, the countries of the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark and France, which set goals beyond uh, both the European Union Council and other European Union uh, member states were examined, starting from the Nordic Zero Energy Building targets defined by the Energy Performance of Building Directive. The development of these four member countries, which are in uh, nearly the same climate zone, uh, towards net zero energy buildings and positive energy buildings, which are the targets they set later are examined. Uh, in the study high performance building uh, design, which are the targets set by these uh, countries are discussed. Uh, this strategy approach are compared. Um, the the roadmap that uh, Turkey uh, should follow for the transition to this design is given. Uh, member countries exceeding European Union non zero energy building targets in the, land, the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, the first of energy house was uh, built in 1982-1983. Uh, in figure 9 with EPC, the energy demand of new buildings has been reduced to almost zero in uh, 25 years. Germany, in Germany, the minimum energy performance loss that starts with the thermal insulation regulation. And the outcome of Germany's progress towards neutral buildings is given in figure 10. Denmark, in Denmark, the, the in 1961, building called concerned with thermal insulation of the building envelope. Uh, figure 11 presents the Danish building energy performance framework from uh, 1961 to the present. Uh, France in France, the fir first thermal insulation regulation come into force in 1975. Uh, figure 12 uh, uh, limited the amount of energy a new building is allowed to consume with the thermal insulation regulation. Uh, Existing uh, situation proposed to road mode in Turkey. There is no concrete variant for the implementation of uh, net zero and uh, non-zero energy buildings, net zero energy buildings, and positive energy buildings in Turkey. However, there are 2030 and past 2030 targets, such as raising awareness for the transition to non-zero energy building and transition to zero energy buildings. 
Uh, evaluation Nederland Terminal yani France uh, uh, Mission Climate Denmark is uh, in the uh, cold climate region. Uh, goals European Union member countries have set targets for energy efficiency, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and across the use of renewable energy in the in their national action plans. Uh, in Table 3, uh, the targets taken up for the neutral of the country survey for 2050 are given. And this situation caused difference in the policies of the country towards the uh, implementation of the targets, Table 5, uh, to decarbonize the energy use of buildings. Almost all uh, existing buildings must be rene renewed by 2050 with the framework of energy efficiency. Uh, figure uh, four 14, the global residential heating and cold energy demand scenario uh, with net zero emissions and the late rate for case. Uh, there are many European Union fund projects and programs for the dissemination of the PEP model, such as Horizon 2020. One of the most important programs is the Positive Energy Zones program. Now, with this program, the building will be positive, and Turkey is uh, within the scope of this program. Uh, figure uh, 15. A conclusion, uh, uh, the countries of the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark and France, uh, uh, while these countries focus on a common solution for 2015 neutral buildings by targeting energy efficiency buildings, uh, they each it uh, extra with a uh, different policy approach. According to uh, the result of the analysis, the best countries in numerical data, such as maximum primary energy consumption, are the Netherlands and Denmark. Uh, however, France was the earliest to transpose the uh, net nearly zero energy buildings targets into their legislation. In in addition, although the future targets of the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark have not been transferred to daily legal regulation yet, the transition to perhaps in France, including in the uh, legal regulation. In addition, although the definition of a uh, nearly zero energy building mm -hmm. It's not yet included in Germany's uh, legal regulation. Uh, it's taken from steps towards its climate neutral targets with the uh, energy savings regulation and the uh, uh, KFW efficiency house. This shows that all four countries uh, can reach uh, the net zero targets for new buildings before 2050, uh, according to current policies. Uh, the first law energy house in the Netherlands in 1982-1983. Uh, uh, Germany first net zero energy buildings in uh, 2013. Uh, the term zero energy building was defined in Denmark in 1976. The construction of the first positive energy buildings in France in 2007. And thank you for your attention. Okay, it was a very quick presentation. Uh, thank you for your efficient presentation, uh, Nushan. And next presenter uh, is Hüseyin Amri Ilgun. Title. Paper authors are Marco Karjalainen and Hüseyin Emre Uygun. The title mm. of paper is a statistical study on multi-story timber residential building in Finland. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, uh, next presenter uh, going to be Marco Karjalainen. Marco, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Marco Karjalainen. Please start. Hello and greetings from Finland. My name is Markku Karajalainen. I am an associate professor of architectural construction from the Tampere University and its School of Architecture. The topic of my video presentation is a statistical study on multi-story timber residential buildings from 1995 to 2021 in Finland. Finland is one of the world's most foresty countries. Finland's forest grows over 108 million cubic meters of food a year. For every Finnish people, our forests grow about 20 cubic meters of food in every year. But how much is 108 million cubic? If we build private house, which means 25 per cubic meters of food, our forest grow in two seconds. If we take one block of flats, what means 
about 30 apartments. If we made it by massive pool, for example, CLT, our forest grow this amount of food in one minute and 40 seconds. And if we take all block of flats built in Finland in one year, it means about 25,000 apartments. If in a year made by massive wood, our forest grow this amount of food in one day. Wood is unquestionable ecological and environmentally friendly renewable material. While growing, one cubic meter of food can bind about one ton of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and at the same time, it re releases oxygen to the air about 700 kilos. <clears throat> The most important factor in the final breakthrough in, of Finnish timber construction will be the coming environmental classifications. In 2025, the environmental impact of producing different construction materials and building will be taken into consideration. Being a domestic, local, renewable and environmentally friendly source of energy and construction material, wood will be a superior raw material. <clears throat> Finnish fire codes changes in the beginning of 2018, last time, and today it is possible made by wood until eight story high residential buildings, dormitories, motels, hotels, office buildings, nursing homes, and also over eight story high buildings with wood are possible with functional fire design. And we can build until four story high gathering and business buildings, for example, schools, markets, and shopping centers. From the beginning of September 1997 on, it was possible to construct wooden building up to four story high. And since 2011, eight story wooden apartment building have been allowed. To date, 117 wooden residential apartment buildings over two-story high, containing 3,675 apartments have been built in Finland. And there is coming in near future about 11,000 apartments more in multi-story wooden buildings. The public city and feedback received regarding use of food in block of flats have been mainly positive. The pilot period of multi-story timber apartment buildings have been, has been indicated that the technical issues related to these buildings can be controlled completely. At the moment, there are three usual construction systems in wood in apartment building construction in Finland. The first one is so-called platform frame system based on stud frames and slab elements. The second one is LVLO glue lamp basic pillar beam ribbit slab system. And the most usual today is CLT based volumetric modular elements. And here you can see the most usual highness. It has amount of floors in Finnish multi-story timber frame houses. Four stories are most usual. It means about 50% and three floors are 27%. And today more and more over five and six story high wooden buildings are going to build. And here you can see the load bearing frame of our multi-story timber frame buildings. And we started with platform frame system. Is the, it is the most usual, but today more and more CLT or stud based volumetric modular elements have been built. And the most of our multi-story timber frame buildings have been rental. It is 58% and also private owned is about 32%. The cross laminated timber technique is becoming more common in construction in Finland, as especially it has been competitive in high multi story timber frame buildings. The main reason is wood superior environmental characteristics and because of the ease of assembly, air tightness, and the frame rigidity. The first CLT factory in Finland has started in Kuhmo at the beginning of December 2014. And today we have three CLT factories in Finland. 
In Finland, we want to show that Buddha is the material of future, not only material of history. Thank you for your attention. Okay, next presenter is Hüseyin Emre Ilgın. The title, the title of is the a search for a new tall building typology, structural hybrid. Please start to say Emre Ilgın. Hi, Emre Ilgın from Middle East Technical University as PhD graduate. Today I'm going to present you a search for a new tall building typology, structural hybrids. After introduction part, hybrids, uh, functional, spatial, structural, and finally, conclusion, I'm going to present. A typical tall building could be divided into three main parts, top, main body, and base. Although main body is the most critical part, this is generally not more than a repetition of start floor for financial desired functions. As a common trend for tower building design, there has been an inflexible homogeneity in the structural arrangement of each floor, disregarding functional needs and user requirements. This approach could enable a building to stand upright, however, they cannot solve the integration problems about the architectural potential of the structure. So, this presentation mainly focuses on analyzing the structure's space-defining roles. Hybrids have started to be recognized as a new architectural prototype in contemporary tall building typology. They could be divided into three main types. Functional hybrids, spatial hybrids, and structural hybrids. Functional hybrids. Tall buildings are mostly designed to meet the user needs, which are determined according to the functional requirements. Functional hybrids could, could be divided into two main categories, single-use and mixed-use. As seen in the figure, Marina City Complex is the first multifunction tall building called as Stay Within a City. To create desired spatial quality as a further step is spatial hybrids. Their design is based on an effort to produce architectural diversity in the vertical direction according to different user needs rather than the repetition of typical or similar floor plans by considering several design criteria such as transportation integration with multi-level access, shared green and social spaces at heights. The interlace is a 24 story and uh, 89 meter high uh, is a residential buildings designed by Oma and Olisheran. It's a reinforced concrete residential complex called as Vertical Village. Represent an architectural prototype for spatial hybrids owing to shared uh, social interactive space with a village-like interconnection, interrelation between private public spaces and natural environment. However, Interior planning was negatively affected by structural dis disruption, as seen in the figure. Structural elements interrupt function. For example, mega columns make use of space difficult and affect the transition between spaces negatively. Moreover, there is a repetition of the same structural elements at floor plans. As in the case of Interlace, Mahanakon is a 75-story, uh, is a uh, super tall building over 300 meter high, designed by Oma Architects and Ole Sheeran. It's a reinforced concrete multifunction tower. Tries to create an architectural prototype for the spatial hybrids. 
due to carefully carved 3D pixelated form within the context of urban realm as an alternative to repetitious vertical stacking of multifunctional units. However, its structural solution is to maintain an economic and re repetitive form where possible, rather than to enrich the architecture by creating opportunities for space making. On the other hand, structural hybrids can be described as tall buildings using structure as a spatial organizer, namely structurally adaptive architectural design without sacrificing special quality in architectural planning. Its realization needs a strong collaboration between architectural and structural design disciplines. There might yet be no tall building project that pleases all these above mentioned conditions. Nevertheless, there are only a few examples, such as the Interlace and Mahanekon, gently caring about their special quality. As a conclusion, hybrids have begun to be recognized as a new architectural prototype, but not yet in all their aspects of functional, spatial and structural potentials. As the most developed type of the hybrids, in terms of uh, spatial quality enriched by structure itself, structural hybrids have a great potential to shape the future of tall building typology where the structure and limits and articulate spatial quality. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Sibel, uh, Professor Sibel, uh, your uh, voice is uh, closed. And uh, can you open your microphone? Sorry, I forget it. Uh, thank you, uh, Gürkan. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your successful presentation, Hüseyin Emre Ilgın. And uh, next presenter is Ayşenur Karakaya and Sedan Acun Özgünler. Uh, title of paper is The Place of Adopt Material in Modern Architecture and Design Possibilities. You can start your presentation, please. Hello, everyone. I am Ayşenur. I am a graduate student at Istanbul Technical University. I am working on smart materials on facade with Professor Sedan Ucun Özgünler. And today I will talk about smart materials on facade, starting from the definition of smart materials, the approach and classification of them, giving the basic information. And I will explain their potential on facade within the context of sustainability, giving some information from the widest material groups and building examples. Through this study, the possibilities of using smart materials, which will have an important role in the near future within the context of sustainability, are presented. Through the diversification of building functions and changing living standards over the years, user comfort conditions have changed. And as a result, the performance parameters as expected from buildings have increased. Here we can see the the term responsive architecture is used for the first time in 1970. So, in recent years, attainment and applying information about smart materials has become a research topic in the field of sustainable architecture, and especially in facade technologies. Along with smart materials, the perspective of materials have begun to change. Smart materials can adapt themselves to environmental circumstances by reversibly changing their properties or the energy. Briefly, smartness in the material is an extensive term which contains various capabilities such as <clears throat> immediacy, transiency, self actuation, selectivity, and directness that distinguish smart materials from traditional materials. <clears throat> 
We can classify smart materials in two groups. If the material's microstructure is altered by an external input, the material changes its microstructural properties and the property change achieves. In energy exchanging smart materials, the energy state of the material exchanges its form, but the microstructure stays the same. Also, smart material classification is a multi-layer classification. So, we can classify the systems that may be smart materials in three groups through their need a control system or not. Possible design potential. Thermotropics, thermochromics, photochromics, electrochromics change their opposite state in the effect of thermal differences, ultraviolet or with a small voltage, respectively. And we can use them smart windows as transparent components or exterior cladding as opaque ones on facades. We can see the manufacturing possibilities and response times from the table. And as we have mentioned previous slides, there are three smart material system groups. And we can say Electrochromic smart windows are active systems. Here we can see an example that contains electrochromic smart windows on its transparent and opaque states. So we can say smart windows have an adaptive performance on facades, which provides shading, temperature optimization, user comfort, and energy efficiency. <coughs> Before the conclusion, I will briefly talk about the building that we see on the page, Monteverde. It's an example that's constructed with titanium dioxide based membranes in Vienna. These are photocatalytic self cleaning surfaces in ceramic facades. We can also say photoadhesives from adhesion changing smart material work. For this material, Scientific tests have shown that 1,000 square meters of photocatalytic coated facade surface achieved an air cleaning effect of 70 medium-sized trees. So, in conclusion, for some steels with the problem of air pollution, photocatalytic ceramic facades will help to reduce air pollution with enough natural light reversibly. This is an important result for sustainability and health. And facade is vitally important aspects of sustainability as they are the building envelopes in which the most heat is lost and the most heat is gained. Thermal and visual comfort are the major performance parameters for the human health and the sustainability. If thermal and visual comfort conditions cannot be achieved in some climate conditions, Mechanical solutions are needed for heating, cooling, and lighting demands. So, along with smart windows, overheating and glare, which are the major problems for the building energy, thermal and visual comfort, and of course sustainability, can also be enhanced. From the smart windows, photochromics have a big role to reduce total energy using for cooling and heating energy depending on the climate in the scope of sustainability. One of the most important disadvantage of thermochromics is shorter lifespan due to effect of temperature. And electrochromics have an advantage of allowing user control since opposite states can be controlled by user in air conditions. Also, electrochromic materials have the widest area in the market, which are the most accessible smart material family. Although using electricity in electrochromics needs more energy when compared to other ones, the total energy use of the building can be still lower. And one of the most important advantages of smart material is that our that can be produced since they are not local materials. Therefore, they can be manufactured and used in a wide range of area, including Turkey. Today, 
in Turkey there are available smart material applications, but just based on interior smart tin films in order to control the opacity of the glass by devices. Even if the processes involve more steps that use energy in smart materials, the total energy demand in the life cycle of the building could much lower depending on the climate. In today's technology, smart materials and their applications on facade are still under research. However, smart materials have a great potential in the field of architecture within the scope of sustainability. Here are the references. And thank you for listening to me. Thank, thank you for your uh, efficient presentations, uh, Ayşenur Karakaya. And last presenter uh, is Ali Yıldız. Uh, you can uh, start your presentation and title of paper is the place of, sorry, uh, the place of adobe material in modern architecture and design possibility. Participants, I research in this study, the place of adobe material in modern architecture and design possibilities. Although it is considered as a building material identified with underdeveloped societies and otherwise, the earth material maintains its importance in terms of being a natural, ecological, sustainable and economical building material. Historically, earth materials have been employed as building material for thousands of years of human existence. The simple character of the buildings constructed with brick material and their prominence with their functional aspects cause their designs to be otherized. At this point, the effect of the Construction of buildings with a simple understanding by the local people within the local possibilities is great, and the adult material remains in the background as other building materials since it is not well known by today's architects. However, adult should stand out as an indispensable material for the development of natural, healthy, ecological, and sustainable designs. In the context of modern design understanding, the earth material which is behind other building materials should be improved in various ways and developed as an alternative to concrete material in particular and made preferred in building construction. In this study, the place of earth material in architecture from past to present and its design possibilities were investigated. Applications on nuclear materials and adopt stabilization and their reflections on design were examined. Especially in the framework of modern architecture, the possibilities of using earth as a building material and unique values that earth material will gain in contemporary designs were investigated. The adult material has been used in the construction of buildings, especially in the economically weak areas where other building materials such as wood and stone aren't widely available. Due to its relatively easy construction and the fact that the materials used in its composition are found in almost every region, adult structures were built in a wide geography. According to different types and forms of buildings emerged due to the differences in the materials used in adobe construction, different climatic conditions, changing needs, and different cultural characteristics and construction techniques specific to adobe structures have developed. Adobe buildings produced by traditional construction techniques have developed within the framework of local facilities as they don't require significant knowledge of mastery. Especially in the construction of structures in rural areas, the use of adobe has become widespread due to the material possibilities, labor, and production costs. In addition, due to the fact that nuclear material can be produced with simple hand tools and the construction of the buildings is simple and quick, this construction was mostly carried out by the building owners. Those adobe structures developed within the framework of user needs and possibilities were generally shaped in a simple character and functionally. Generally, adopt buildings for residential use were built as one or two stories with a simple plan understanding and due to the material limitations, the space dimensions were kept small. Depending on the cultural interaction, there have been similarities in the techniques and designs applied in the construction of adopt structures in different countries. In general, the walls of multiple structures built with masonic stem are made thick to ensure the bearing property. In order to increase the height of the wall and the load bearing capacity, placing wooden beams or stone blocks in the wall structure is also one of the techniques applied in the masonic system. In addition, other material is also used as a filling between the wooden frame stem so that the advantages 
of Adobe can be further used by reducing the thickness of the walls. The weak mechanical properties of Adobe and its instability to water moisture and atmospheric effects and being a heavy material limit its use, especially in large span and multi-story building designs. It becomes impossible to use Adobe material produced by traditional methods as structural system material. Additionally, Adobe material buildings produced by traditional methods are insufficient to provide contemporary comfort conditions. In addition, the advantages provided by the use of earth material in buildings show that improved adobe material can be used as an alternative to concrete and brick in modern design. Smooth brick provides the opportunity to create healthy environments due to its low thermal conductivity and high heat storage properties as well as its natural material. Furthermore, as an ecological material, it is important for sustainable green building designs is increasing day by day. Techniques applied to improve the properties of adobe can be listed as compression, adding mineral or additive materials, adding synthetic waste to composition. By applying these techniques together, the desired improvement in material properties can be achieved. In addition, adobe structures created by filling the earth in bags and stacking it on top of each other also reflect the developments in adobe materials. Compressed earth blocks technique allows the production of earthen blocks in different forms and with holes in the middle. Thus, especially profile earth blocks are better interact to each other while the holes created contribute to reducing the weight of the wall. Square adopt techniques consist of introducing local soil and small amounts of a binder in degradable bags that serve as the framework and as confinement of the filling. The bags are stacked one over the other forming the walls of the house. Stabilizers such as lime, gypsum, cement, bitum or resins were added to improve the earth properties. And the properties of the material have been improved by using synthetic tubers instead of natural tubers. The knowledge gained from traditional structures contributes to the development of modern designs. In particular, traditional modular structures provide direction to the designs of modern other structures in aspects such as materials, techniques and forms. In modern adobe building designs developed to, for rural areas, formed compatible with traditional adobe structures are designed inspired by local architecture. In addition, the application of improved adobe material together with contemporary materials ensures development of original projects. Adobe material produced by modern techniques facilitates the design of wide and multi structures by expanding the limits of space dimensions, make possible for the passing of wide spans and reducing the thickness of the bearing walls. By using adobe material in contemporary designs, it is possible to construct sustainable ecological and modern structures with minimum cost. The adobe material whose use has decreased over time is not sufficiently recognized by architects and users, as led to its not being included in the designs, due to the fact that adobe structures require constant maintenance cannot respond to changing needs, cannot show the desired performance in terms of structural and earthquake safety, and as of access to other building materials, its use in rural areas has also decreased and it has become a preferred material in economically weak areas. However, the fact that adopt material allows the design of healthy spices and has a low environmental impact has made it come to the fore again for contemporary building designs. In addition, solutions for improving the properties of nucleic material and using it with other building materials allow the development of original designs. By using improved adobe, it is possible to design thin and aesthetic building elements instead of thick and heavy building elements to create large surface windows and to use daylight at the desired level with perforated adobe blocks to be used within the wall. Thus, with the solutions to be applied in contemporary designs, the weaknesses of adopt material will be eliminated and its advantages will be utilized. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, to all presenters for taking their time efficiently and talking about very important issues. Uh, they provided us important information in a short time. 
I wish good luck uh, to all presenters. Uh, and uh, I think we can continue uh, question and answer part. Uh, firstly, all presenters, uh, can you, if it is impossible, can you open your cameras? Cameras, please, if is it possible. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions? If you want, you can write your questions and I can ask our presenters. Do you have any questions, dear participants? No? Okay, uh, again, uh, thank you so much all presenters and uh, I think ending in the session Thank you for your uh, valuable contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.